everyone. I'm so excited to be here. I'm every time when I'm in Italy, I'm super excited because there are three reasons. First, pizza, the second one, pasta, and the third one, gelati. So, um, and I know it's very late, but um, like imagine there's like only 30 minutes with me and after I can read your faces and I know that you're waiting for the networking beer. So I, I, I will have this in mind just to uh, quickly tell you about SVG and later you're free. Um, okay, so uh, my topic is OMG, it's all about SVG. And um, I already told you and I made my confession that I'm addicted to Italian kitchen, Italian cuisine. Um, and for me, SVG is just like Italian gelati. It's like, um, once you try, you cannot resist it later. So I hope that you will join with me uh, on this SVG journey and you will uh, find that SVG is really cool. Uh, whenever you have a question, you can tweet me. Here's my Twitter handle. You can use this hashtag, um, but I will be also very, um, very happy if you, you would me give me, if you will give, give me um, the recommendations for the ice creams. So I already tried um, Jolitis, right, Jaliti. And if you know any better gelateria, just ping me. Um, okay, but it's, unfortunately it's not presentation about ice creams and not about gelati. Uh, okay, so before I actually start, a couple of words about myself. So I live in Warsaw in Poland. Uh, I work at Adobe where, I, uh, where I'm a designer and front-end developer. So I try to combine these two roles and I really enjoy it. Uh, and I think that SVG is a perfect example of combining design and code. Um, so this topic came kind of in a natural way for me. And uh, after work, I organize, co-organize workshops for beginners from H uh, with HTML and CSS. So we teach people um, how to create websites, and it's really fun. We also organize meetups for developers and designers, because we believe that um, front-end developers and designers should cooperate together and get on well. Um, OK, so you know about me, and now I would like find something about you. So now everybody, please raise your hands. Yeah. And yeah, and keep, keep it, keep it high. Uh, okay, so everybody who is developer, keep, keep your hand high. And any other people you can put, like, we've got the only this developers. I, I, I don't believe you, sorry. <laughs> Once again, your hand in the air. <laughs> okay, okay, so developers, keep your hands high, okay. And developers, you can put your hands down. Any other designers? Oh, cool. Awesome. And any other people? Probably too shy or uh, too asleep. OK. Um, OK, so what's the agenda today? Uh, I tell you about um, the coolness of SVG. So why SVG is so hype right now and why you should learn more about it. Um, I will tell you some tips and tricks, which is good to know, especially at the beginning. Um, I will show you how to make SVGs alive. And uh, last but not least, I will shed some light on SVGs accessibility. Okay, so first I owe you a definition what SVG actually is. Um, SVG is a scalable vector graphics. It stands for as scalable vector graphics. Uh, so it's XML-based vector format. And it's perfect, uh, because in the year of thousands of different devices, mobiles, iPads, tablets, desktops, screen readers, and so on and so forth, we've got the format that actually scales without losing its quality. So it's perfect. And the funny fact is that um, it was originated in 1998, I guess, so many years ago. And now people started to um, really appreciate this format. Okay, so we know what SVG is, but now uh, we should know why it's so cool. So what its, uh, its virtues? First of all, we know that it's scalable, but it also generates crisp and perfectly clear display. So in the um, times of retina display of different pixel densities, it's just perfect. Um, what's more, SVG is accessible, and I will tell you about it a little bit later. Um, and comparing to its uh, raster equivalents, like PNG files, um, SVG has a smaller file size, which is, as well, super cool. 
Um, so whenever you work with designers and they give you um, icons in PNG format, just you should tell them that SVG is a new favorite format for them. And last but not least, um, SVG is animatable and stylable, and I think that this is my favorite one. Uh, so you can do real magic. And um, I already mentioned that SVG is for me like gelati because I cannot resist it. And here's you've got you've got the perfect example because all the presentation is creating is created um, by me and reveal.js and all the things you can see are SVGs um, animated in CSS. So you've got live examples. Oh, and actually I didn't mention about something, um, that SVG is uh, widely supported by the web browsers. Um, of course, there is one that doesn't support it. You can guess, maybe. <laughs> Any guess? Yeah, Internet Explorer, but version 8 and below. So it's not that bad, but you should remember. Um, okay, so if you still have doubts and you're not super... Um, interested in SVG, you should read this article. It was published by GitHub, and they decided to abandon icon fonts in favor for SVG. So they, um, they give great arguments why it, it is wise to use SVG. And I think that SVG is it's in prime time right now, so it's really good to pay attention what's happening um, out there. Okay, so we know what SVG is, what are the advantages, and now we should know how we actually can create um, SVG file or graphics. So we, of course, need um, vector-based uh, software. So, for instance, it's Adobe Illustrator. I think this is the most um, popular one. We've got Enscape, which is open source and free. Um, and we've got, for instance, Sketch. I'll be talking about Adobe Illustrator since I'm most familiar with this one. Um, and there are some tips of and tricks uh, about which you should know. First of all, imagine that you've got the graphics created. I don't know whether you can design or not, <laughs> or you work a lot with designers, but always pay attention what's happening out, maybe I will use this, what's happening out here. Um, because these are the elements that are included in the whole graphic. And it's very important to name the layers because later when Adobe Illustrator generates the SVG code, the layer names are our IDs. So we can use them in CSS. So it's, it's, it's good to make cleanups before generating the code. Another thing is that when you create the graphics, you've got, sorry, just playing it, maybe from the beginning. Uh, you've got the artboard and you've got the white space, and it's very important to um, to make the graphic exact size, the artwork the exact size of the graphic. So you can use um, artboard fit to artboard bounds, because if you don't do this, you will have some problems and battles with positioning this SVG file. Um, and imagine that you've got text in your SVG graphics, um, and there are two options. One, uh, if you want to have your text accessible, selectable, and searchable, uh, you should keep text as a text, so don't, you, don't do this. Um, but you have to know that uh, when you don't have the font embedded, you won't have this beautiful uh, the font displayed on the web. So just make sure that uh, your font is embedded if it's custom font. Um, if it's just a decorative text, you don't need to have it se searchable or selectable. So there is an option to create outlines, so our text is not longer a text, but a set of shapes. And in this case, you don't need to embed fonts. So it's a smaller file size and less problems. And uh, the last thing, um, you're ready to save uh, graphics into the file, and this is the SVG dialog. Um, and very important thing here is the CSS properties. So you can change it, and I recommend using presentation attributes. What does it mean? It means that in our code, all the attributes will be placed just in the, the tag. Uh, but you can also have um, all the attributes gathered in CSS code. 
it depends what you want to achieve. I think that the best way is just to um, learning by trying. Okay, so we know how to create uh, um, the graphics. We know how to save it. And now it's time to finally place our graphics on the web. Um, there are many options, as you can see. Um, but each of them has some pros and cons, and it depends what you want to uh, achieve in the end. Um, you can just uh, add um, SVG and or display it on the website, just like typical image files, just like PNG or JPEG using IMG tag. So it's simple. It, you just give the path to the SVG file. But if you want to have like do, do the tricks, um, IMG tag won't let you to do this. So it's better to skip all of this and focus on inline SVG. What does it mean? Uh, you just copy the code generated by uh, graphics software and paste it to your HTML. And SVG is a, has a markup, so it fill in, in the HTML documents, it feels like at home. So I really recommend it. Um, you might be a little bit um, afraid of pasting so many lines of code and it looks very chaotic, um, but there is no other option actually. And you will learn that um, this method lets you to do the magic. And the cool thing about Illustrator uh, is that when you copy the graphic and paste directly to the code editor, you will see the code, not the image. So it's cool. Okay, so how does um, the SVG code look like? Well, it looks strange. Don't be afraid of it. You've got, you, you see many numbers. Um, but when you look closer, you will find path, you will find G, which stands for group. So you mean, it means that you can group elements together. Um, you can see circle, something that you are familiar with. Um, you can see feel and the color. So you can slowly imagine how it's being generated and what does it mean. Um, and of course, uh, because Adobe Illustrator just generates the code, um, and does it, doesn't think about it too much. Uh, the, um, our code um, includes like empty groups, descriptions that are um, not very necessary, or comments that we can get rid of. So it's wise to use cope, uh, code optimization, uh, code optimizers. Um, there are two, the most, I think, popular ones. This is the online tool, and this one is offline. Um, so it depends what you like. Um, but please, please take care. Because sometimes if you remove too many elements, it might occur that your graphics is missing something. So always, you know, have a backup of your graphics. Okay, and styling and animating, the, the coolest thing. Um, so styling SVG is just like styling any other element in CSS. And I think that this is the coolest and the most fascinating thing about it. Because you just take the, the SVG code, Play 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 with it a bit. Uh, play with it a little. Um, add some classes, IDs, and add CSS animations. And the cool thing is that you can use um, keyframe animations, transform, and transitions. So, uh, sky's the limit. And because SVG has its Dome MP API, uh, we can use Web Dev Tools to to inspect the code and see what's happening. And the coolest, I think that the coolest thing in this topic is that, that you can grab a piece of code, not like, average, ev um, not like the whole SVG file, but for instance, let me maybe show you like this. You can take this piece of, because this is the whole SVG, right? Uh, this um, tube and this paint. And I took only this line, so this is a path, um, added, a SVG, uh, added a class, and add an anima animation. So you, you can grab like, uh, let me maybe find something more with a hand. Yeah, actually this is the whole SVG, so this is not a good example, but maybe this one. You can grab just a line and animating, and other things can do different tricks, like this pencil. Um, so you can just get to a little a part of the SVG graphic and make it alive. And I think it's really cool because you can use uh, web dev tools to do it. Um, and as you can see, there is a path right here. Let's cut it. 
Um, and we can see some classes. We can add animation to this. So it's very easy, really. Um, you can start playing with it today. <laughs> Uh, this is just the example that I created the website and I created the, the whole graphics right here in Adobe Illustrator. Um, and in the web tools, I found uh, the pieces of code that was responsible for generating this waves. I added simple CSS animations and ta -da, this is this is the magic. If you want to play with it just for fun, I really recommend you to use CodePen. There are lots of different and crazy ideas how to make um, your graphics alive. Um, this is just my example. And they're really simple. You can dig into the code, but they're very simple um, animations, like scaling or transforming something. So really fun. Unfortunately, life is not that beautiful, and there are some tricks and bugs which, about which you should know, um, because otherwise it's not fun. Um, and the first one is transform origin. So by default, every SVG element uh, has, its uh, has its origin, transform origin, uh, um, defined on the zero, zero point. So if you look at this rectangle, it will rotate um, around zero, zero point. But we want to achieve something like this. So it rotates in the center, right? So this is the transform origin. So we have to change it in SVG. It's easy because you use transform origin. Unfortunately, Firefox doesn't want to work with us because transform, sorry, transform origin 50% and 50% or center center doesn't work. As you can see, it's something like this. Um, so you have to find absolute values and you have to count it or define it um, in the terms of your width and height. Another thing is view box. So this is the SVG code. Yes. Um, and you will spot something like view box. So now you can um, focus on this element because later I'll do the quiz and this, there would be a question about it. Um, view box is an attribute, as you can see. This is an attribute of SVG which uh, defines coordinate system. And this is quite hard thing about SVG um, because SVG um, isn't governed by box model. So it doesn't have paddings or margins. Um, it has its own system, which is the view box. And um, you have to be very careful about it. Um, and the best way is to not remove it. But I will remind you of about it um, in a minute. So what is the view box? Here you can see four values. The first one is minimum x, minimum y, and the last two is width and height. So zero, zero means the beginning of the coordinate system, which is usually the top left corner. So here we've got SVG graphics. Um, so zero, zero point is here, and we've got width 195 and height 195. So this is how it looks. We can change the view box, so the last two numbers, but it just crop out our graphics. It looks like this. We can also change the first two values, so the, the, beginning, the beginning of the coordinate system, but it just also um, change the place of our graphics, like this. We can also enlarge the view box, so we will increase the white space. We can also add negative values, so make the, the graphics in the very center of the image. And what happens if we remove view box? Something like this, very strange. So I really recommend you to remember that the view box should be kept in your code. Um, okay, I already told you that SVG is widely supported. Um, but of course we have to provide fallback and it's very easy. Um, we can do this by adding image tag. So in the code, it looks like this. 
very easy. We've got our raster equivalent, and if browser doesn't support SVG, it will just skip the SVG tag and directly go to image, which is recognized. Okay, and what about accessibility? I promised you to tell you something about it. So SVG is accessible, and um, it's very widely used right now for data visualization, for bar charts, graphs, and so on. And it's better um, comparing to HTML canvas, it's better because it's accessible. Um, and how it happens, actually. Um, there are some useful tags about which is good to know. Of course, if you use SVG just for a decorative manner, not for um, visualizing data or um, presenting form uh, important information, uh, you can skip it. But if you want to have your website uh, with this SVG fully accessible, just remember about it. So what is, what is, what is title? Um, title is just like title for HTML document. So is the title for the graphics. If we have um, one element on the graphic, it's very easy because we use one title. If we've got like groups of different elements in one SVG file, we can use a couple of, um, of these tags, so a couple titles. Um, and in this case, we should associate somehow title with a given group. And we do this by this attribute area labeled by. So it combines um, the group together. So uh, we can easily make our SVG accessible. And finally, let's um, make a small sum up. We know that SVG is scalable, right? It generates queries display, so it just perfectly answers all our problems connected with Retina displays. Uh, it has a smaller file size than PNG or other raster equivalents. Um, we can easily embed it depending on the method. Uh, SVG can be more or less accessible, but remember about inline embedding because it's the best one and the most flexible. Uh, we can easily animate uh, SVG with CSS animations, which probably you all, on, all know because there's like you know couple of couple lines of code. Uh, we can also animate SVG with Smile and GreenSock, which is JS library. Uh, I haven't played with that, so I can tell you whether it's so smooth as CSS, but maybe you can tell me. Um, and it's accessible. Overall, SVG for me is fun, and I think that with simple lines of code, you can do the magic on your website, so why not to try? Um, I'm happy that you joined my journey, and now, uh, I would like to ask you to join my quiz. Uh, if you're still alive, because, <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> Thanks, God. Um, okay, so the task is simple. You've probably all got phones connected to Wi-Fi or your computers. So you have to enter this website. This have, uh, has, has anybody played Kahoot, this game? Or not? You don't know this. Okay, so please enter. And now I'll give you the, the pin. Oh, and I didn't mention about the reward. So I've got the stickers, uh, the awesome stickers. So the winner will get them all. I hope that you're excited, just like me. Um, OK, you can work with in Paris or alone. It depends on you. Um, OK, so this is your, uh, your game pin, which you should enter. And I'm waiting for the players. Ready? Stop. 
starting. So you see, you know this game, Millionaires, right? You, you've got this in Italy, th th this is show. So this is the question, and you've got uh, four answers. And th 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 there can be more than one. Um, good answer. And the time counts, so be fast. Okay, let's see. Who is Gerarda? Congratulations, you're the first one. Okay, but we've got four more questions, so be prepared. SVG is styleable, scalable, weights more than NG files, is <laughs> You're so good. Um, but, you know, other people are following you. Okay, ready? How can... Oh, sorry, there's a typo. How can you embed SVG in HTML? <laughs> Okay, four out of the five, so... question maybe maybe Francesco who's Francesco yeah. okay so just you know focus <laughs> okay and Gerarda you, you, you have to stay focused as well okay the last question easy this was easy Let's see. Get out of congratulations. <laughs> this is for you, but you can share with Francesco. <laughs> no, I just it was just a suggestion. So I know it's very late and you're tired, but if you have uh, yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Oh sorry, this was Maybe you want to be on the podium and I can <laughs> take a picture of you. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, any other? Francesco, a picture? Did, did you take it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so I know it's quite late. So if you have any questions, you can just, you know, find me on the conference or write me on my Twitter. The presentation will be available probably on my website. Um, and if you have any other related SVG questions and gelati suggestions just reach me out and thank you <laughs>